I will just say that last week I was in the sauna at the Y and there were guys and they started talking and I just decided I would listen a little bit and then maybe and I revealed I was talking to a friend and somebody asked what do you do and I said in part I do this producing stuff for native media and and I said you know um, I'm thinking about doing something about um, the Redskins game because I knew that there was a group of people co going down to the game and I was trying to figure out how to cover it and so I heard these you know, different white guys talk about it and one of the things that I heard was it doesn't he had no idea what say redskin meant he had no I he had he had no cultural touch point he said um, to that and there was another guy who was maybe a little bit younger and he was saying well you know I've seen surveys on this and they say that you know most native people or native american people could not care less they do not care at all about these names and you know of course i mean we're in the sauna we're not gonna, i'm not going to ask him for his references or whatever but i was just listening to what they said about it and i'm trying to think about how to frame it and um and then i saw your fly, your pdf that went down and you know with some of the people to um the the protests where you're framing the issue of a team being called W you know what the Washington team is called and you're framing it in a public health context and so could you t just talk a little bit about that well yeah and I think you bring up a, a couple of good points and um, kind of speak to the reason why I uh, looked at it in, in that particular way uh, one is I think and you know, other people could speak a, a lot more to the lack of um, accurate history that Americans get in regards to Native American history, which might explain some of your uh, sauna conversation. <laughs> no, it gets deep in there. But yeah. I mean, there's a lot of sports talk and stuff. And I mean, I wasn't. Yeah. And, it, and also, you know, I'm a, I'm, I do education, but I'm also a media person, so I don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really don't think that I, I'm going to do some education here, but I sure. just think these are good questions, and now I have this person that can right. answer some of it. Well, and, and that's the thing. I don't, um, I would love for every American to get um, a solid education on Native American history and unbiased and written by Native people, but that's not the case. Um, so I think another way to help folks understand the importance of this issue, especially non-Native folks, is to think about uh, how it affects children, Native children, um, non-Native children, and our communities. So for me, again, I'm, I'm a marriage and family therapist, so I think about families and I think about children. And that's um, one thing that's really hard to debate, you know? You can't say, oh, I really don't want Native American children <laughs> to be treated fairly. I mean, that's something that would be really, I'm sure we could find someone to say that, but I, I think it's really hard pressed for people to say that. I don't think anyone wants that. And that's the thing, I I think everyone, if they had the information, they would do the right thing. But I think we're really lacking that history. So the information that I wanted to kind of transmit was that, listen, that these Native children are being exposed to, um, really negative imagery, stereotypes, and racism, and it really affects them. And it affects them in a way that breaks connections with their peers, with their community, and uh, decreases self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So, And creates shame. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, and you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in this area at all. Um, I, in a specific specifically imagery or, or mascots, but I think it does cross uh, my per personal and uh, professional area. And, and, you know, with some of Stephanie Freiberg's research, she looked at how um, these Native students, they felt disconnected with their community. They, and, and that's maybe where that kind of shame and stigma comes in. So, of course, that's the last thing that I think any Native person would want and in you know in in my heart in my mind I think that would be the last person that it, the last thing that anyone would want for anyone so my uh, my football team that I sadly cannot stop being a fan of <laughs> I'm not like you Melissa I grew up in Minnesota well I'm <laughs> assuming that you're a Packer fan because of, of your Sault Ste. Marie I might, 
I am going not too far. a sports fan. Or you're not whatsoever. Okay. Well, well, I don't watch it. I'm. I don't cheer for anyone. <laughs> so um, you're okay here. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Vikings, you know, who do reflect my ancestry, um, you know, but they're like pirates. I mean, that's actually there's a team called the Pirates too. They're really bad people. You know, I mean, this is my ancestors I'm talking about. They did some bad things. You know, they pillaged and, you know, hurt people really badly. And, and we sort of, um, you know, that's that's a name that the team is called. And I, it doesn't bother me that the team is called the, the Vikings, you know, and that they have, they kind of make fun of our, you know, how we wore our hair and how we had our um, helmets and, and other things. And I kind of appreciate, you know, the guy walks around and he's a, He's a barbarian. You know, he's not going to Ireland to steal all the women or whatever. But he's, you know, he's uh, what's that guy? Anyway, <laughs> so um, why is it that that's not hurtful to me, but the you know a name and some of the likenesses that we might have seen on on some teams um, can be um, considered hurtful? Does uh, it compare or not? I had actually just had this conversation with my co-workers in our office because we have native and non-native wor people working in our office and I and I, I asked them that about the Vikings and I said <laughs> you know like it's similar and what's the difference I don't know I don't have the answer and I think someone said maybe because I think they even said that maybe that wasn't a real group of people or come on that's fine yeah. yeah so so um, it doesn't seem real it's more like a character but there's american indian people today i don't know i was just throwing it out there because it just popped into my mind but i don't really have any answer on that well well i would say i think there's um you know a lot of different groups besides just the Native American groups are, you know, um, I think there's more attention now than there used to be around things like dressing up on Halloween like a Mexican. Um, or, you know, I saw someone at a certain hockey game not too long ago dressed mm -hmm. up as a rich Arab. And um, I think there is more attention towards this topic uh, than there has been in the past. I know a Colorado University has banned the use of, you know, um, dressing up as ethnic, specific, any specific ethnic group. One time I had uh, heard a story about a man um, in Wisconsin who had to dress up, or he didn't have to, but at his school, I believe it was a public school, um, they had a a Native American mascot for their school. So this young man, while he was still in high school, would dress up in a stereotypical kind of headdress um, and go out and they would all laugh and throw things at him and mock him and it was totally degrading and humiliating for that student. and. And the so student who was the mascot who was, was Native American. And he was Native yes. American and he was being degraded. Yes. And and just kind of makes you want to throw something, doesn't it, when you hear that, that, that he was in that. Spot. Well, he then went on to collect all kinds of information about mascots because I didn't really understand the full impact of it. And he now has a, a traveling show that is just all on his own. It's like a museum or a gallery of historical to current images, mascots, books, anything. And, and if you ask him, he will come and set up his, it's like a full room set up of all of the things that he's collected. And when you see all of it together, all the images together, and you just see the full impact of how powerful those images are in a negative way. And to hear, and then when he gets up and tells his story about what happened to him and how traumatic that was for him to be a native person and then to dress up like one, and then, um, and then I know another person who there's the lining kugels, 
Beer Brewery Company of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And I know, um, I won't say who, but grew up with being called piss water in the, going to the Chippewa Falls schools because it was a way of connecting the American Indian ladies head portrait is on the bottles of the Lining Kugel's logo and so then you have a Native American person going to the public school system in Chippewa Falls and in the 60s before before AIM and the American Indian Religious Freedom Act and all of that so um, well I'm sure things like that still happen today even though we've gone through those times but it was maybe even worse I don't know so anyway she was called piss water a lot um, so those images are detrimental they may seem innocent sometimes and we wonder why but then you hear stories like that and it really uh, makes a, makes it clear how damaging it can really be for people when you at our school here um, professor Lewis our uh, mass our I, I don't know if you didn't say the word mascot, but but we are the Okichida, which are you know I mean, you, Melissa warrior. can probably help, but it's it's like it's like warrior, mm -hmm. and um, when I was in junior high, at this you know white school, our mascot was <laughs> was the warrior, and it's different, and I can't exactly explain why it's different, but maybe you I mean you're the professor, you're the you're the <laughs> psychologist again, and it's family and. And so maybe it's maybe that's a little t even a stretch for you, but I mean, can you explain why that's different and why it works for us to do it here and why it was a good idea, which that school did change their, the you know the school that was called the Warriors mm -hmm. is not anymore. So, um, well, I probably can't, but I can <laughs> <laughs> I can try because I think it's just it's a lot more community specific, and I'm not familiar with those communities and those stories, but. I think a critical component is Native people being able to decide how they want to be portrayed in images, in stories, um, and in the, their communities and the larger community um, of their country or the world. And the problem with the current mascots is that it doesn't accurately portray Native people um, their stories. It doesn't. And um, hearing you use an Anishinaabe word, that tells me something. Um, hearing you say that, um, you know, we are on the Fond du Lac Reservation, that tells me something else. So I think your answer probably is not really with me. It's probably with people who live in this community. But if I could think about what I would imagine to be important would be again to giving and privileging Native people's um, portrayal of themselves, and that's a whole a, a whole Part other conversation yeah. because yeah. every community and every tribe and every family is different, and that's another problem with some of these national teams um, because right. there's so much misinformation given in such a little animated. <laughs> caricatured person um, well just one of the differences might be that if you're at a game so it's empowering to name yourself and they're using the Ojibwe language with using the word Ogechida and it's something that represents pride um, for the Ojibwe people and so if you're at a game you probably wouldn't see people in the audience from Fond du Lac like making doing gestures of mocking Native American, like putting their hand over the mouth, doing the, you know, woo, woo, powwow thing, or putting their hand behind their head, dancing around. Which no one does at powwows. <laughs> no, <laughs> like at a game. Right, right. Right, and no one does at powwows, yeah. right. So, having, yeah, so what is, yeah, that's a good question though, because I'm sure people bring that up or it crosses people's minds, like why is it okay for, that's what you're asking, like, why is it okay for this Ojibwe school to have this Ogechida name and 
it's not okay for another team over here. Maybe because it's just a name, they're naming themselves of themselves. And there wouldn't be anyone in the bleachers doing mocking or making fun of it.